All right, I got this GMC Denali Envoy, which has got the 5.3 liter. This particular one uh, we're taking a look at, uh, it's got a running issue. We got 169,000 miles on the clock and it's got a uh, obvious hesitation or a uh, stumble in one of the cylinders. I ran a code check on it and uh, I started deactivating cylinders and found out that it's cylinder number seven, which is the back corner on the driver's side cylinder that is the problem. Uh, so we're gonna go ahead and run a compression test on here. Uh, right now I'm hooked into cylinder number five. Okay, so we start with the first cylinders one, then we got three, then five, then seven. Seven is the problem cylinder. We're gonna check the compression on number five next to it to give it something to compare it to. Okay. So as you can see, we've got about 155, 160 PSI. Decent compression there. So let's go ahead and get it started. Okay, got that nice and tight. There we go. Let's see what we got in number seven. Yeah, that's a dead cylinder. What do we got? I think it moved up five, maybe 10 pounds of compression. Let me see uh, if I'm gonna take the time to pull this cylinder off this valve cover and see if we can uh, take a look inside there. All right, let's see what we got going on. Just pulled the coil pack off, or the uh, coil rack, I should say. Got these wires disconnected kind of out of the way, and I removed these four bolts for the valve cover. Definitely popped up loose. This one's still gonna come out a little bit more. Gonna open this up and see if we got any valve train issues causing the low compression in that last cylinder. Oh, we got this to pull off too. There we go. That's everything. Okay. And there we are. Valves seem to be okay from what I'm seeing right now. We're gonna go ahead and turn it over. All right, I got you set up. So what we wanna do is compare these two rockers to say these two rockers next to it, make sure they're swinging up and down the full amount or if they're stopping or not moving or if there's anything weird going on there. So it might be a little bit of oil that sprays out when I turn it, but uh, no big deal. All right, let's see what happens. There you have it. You saw it. This valve, uh, this rocker right here was not moving at all. The rocker arm is there. Everything's nice and tight. It's literally, oh, look at that. We got a collapse lifter. So that's exactly what's going on, that there's no oil inside that lifter. And the lifter, it's a hydraulic lifter that re re relies on uh, oil inside of it. And that oil keeps it in a certain position, but also allows it to give it a little bit of a sponginess to it to kind of keep tolerances tight and reduce valve train noise. But the whole idea is as the car is running with the oil in it, it stays solid. And what happens is that lifter ends up bad and then it doesn't have any push on the rocker arm. So I guess I could have just pushed on that with my finger earlier to figure that out. But yeah, we got a stuck lifter. So uh, I've heard in the past of people uh, spraying like some uh, PB blaster down into the hole on the top of the lifter to see if we can free it up and maybe stick in the, uh, a little rod down there and tapping on it a couple of times, see if we can get it to pop up uh, or see if it doesn't. Uh, now, I don't know if this car is one of the ones that has the cylinder deactivation uh, displacement on demand because I know that uh, 
that was an issue where what it would do is it would hydraulically change the lifters so they wouldn't lift the valves. I believe they, it is the intake valve and deactivate some of the cylinders. But then when it goes back into V8 mode, uh, they would get stuck and stay collapsed, kind of like what's going on here. Okay, and I believe I'm looking at this, the plate on top of the motor, and I believe that if you see and you look on top of this plate, there's all kinds of little like passageways. See how it has like little circular passageways, almost like a maze on it. It's not just a regular flat plate. I believe that indicates that this is one of the displacement on demand engines. And that's probably exactly what has happened. And uh, that's what's going on with this vehicle. So, all right. So what I got here is I've got my little, uh, I forget what they call this thing, like a little microscope deal that goes down. Basically, the end of it just has a light on it. I'm actually going to pull it back out to clean it. All right, so here's the end of it. It's basically just got a little light on it, and then there's a little video camera in the end. And whatever it sees, it go ahead and shows you on the screen here. Okay, there we go. There's the lifter right there inside the bore. Okay, this outer ring right here, that's the lifter. Out here is the block. This is the uh, hole that the lifter goes in, the passageway inside the block. This is the very edge, the outer skirt of the lifter. And this is the center part of the lifter with the hole that the oil comes out and goes up the push rod. And as you can see, there's distance between the bottom here and up against this edge. So you can see that the lifter is in fact collapsed down. See the shiny walls? That's inside the lifter, not inside the lifter valley. See the difference? Let's see if I can't get, get this set up stationary and see if I can turn the motor over. I'm gonna anticipate that that lifter probably pushed up a little and then maybe just stayed. I don't know if it went up and down without having any pressure to push it back down, but trying to determine whether it is in fact the collapsed lip lifter, which it appears to be, or the actual cam itself. All right, so I stuck the push rod back in and when I put it in, I could actually feel it contact the lifter and I felt it slide down a little bit. So the lifter is moving inside the bore. I'm gonna turn it over one more time. And I think now with this push rod, we should be able to see this push rod will come up a little bit. Of course, it's not coming up as much as it should because the lifter's collapsed. So it's basically the, sh the, the lifter is short and shorter than it should be because it's internally collapsed, but it still should move uh, on the cam somewhat. So let's see if this thing uh, go ahead and moves up. I'm gonna think it's probably about a half an inch. There we go. I clipped some vice grips to the end of that push rods. Now you should be able to see the pair of pliers going up and down. There should be enough weight to push the lifter back down. So this will indicate the amount of movement on the cam. show this movement but see if that works all right let me see if i can push it back down now see all right so that indicates that the lifter is moving it's not frozen or solid or busted apart inside there uh, it's just internally 
frozen. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to spray a bunch of the uh, penetrating oil down inside of that lifter with a long straw and let it sit overnight and see if we can't uh, somehow free up that lifter. I'm going to try some penetrating fluid, uh, a couple of different things we could use. Uh, you could put, spray some diesel in it, uh, maybe sea foam is another good thing anything that's going to eat away at uh at you know like the uh carbonized you know burnt up uh oil because that's what builds up inside and causes it to stick so let's see if we can't get that thing freed up and uh if we are able to get it free we might be able to get that cylinder running again and get it get it running decent and at that point uh what i suggest to anybody that has one of these motors with the displacement on demand uh, as you can, uh, if you know somebody with HP tuners, you can actually uh, tune out and shut off the displacement on de demand so it doesn't turn on ever. Uh, and that way um, it doesn't collapse the lifters uh, where they can get to a collapse state and not open back up because that's what happens. It goes into four cylinder mode, collapses the lifters on every other cylinder so it only runs on four cylinders. And then when it goes to uh, open them back up, uh, they don't open. They end up getting stuck. And a lot of times it can cause havoc with the drivetrain and you can actually blow your motor up sometimes. I've heard of some horror stories, but luckily this one uh, didn't get to that. It's just a sticky lifter. So uh, we would definitely do that. Another indication, I believe, is see this uh, plug here with this uh, sensor on the uh, brake master cylinder. That's another uh, indication that if you have this, you've got displacement on demand. Uh, there's a whole system. I, I hear uh, some people will disconnect this sensor and then it puts the displacement and demand in like a, a, a safe mode where it won't turn on because it doesn't have that sensor to read off of um, just to uh, temporarily disable it. So you don't get to this point where you have a collapse list lifter. But this is a huge common problem. Um, I haven't personally had it yet. This is the first time for me. Um, so we're going to see what we can do about it. Uh, but the proper way really to fix this now would be to uh, pull this cam and lifters out and there's basically a kit where you can put basic hydraulic lifters in and you basically just eliminate this. Uh, and then this is a good, solid, uh, reliable motor after you do that, so. All right, well, I've done pretty much everything that I could think to do to try to free up that lifter. Uh, I've sprayed uh, starting fluid, I've sprayed uh, carburetor cleaner and fuel injection cleaner basically anything that's gonna spray off and clean off that carbon you know sticky oil buildup and uh, i've tapped on it i've blown uh, compressed air into it a couple of times uh, ran it up and down a few times uh, i cannot seem to get that lifter to uh, pump back up so i don't know if it's internally damaged uh something spun inside or what what the deal is with it but it is not uh going to come back to life as i thought uh, i've heard of people being able to do so uh this is pretty much stuck in the water at this point uh it's decision time to decide what to do from here whether we go in and just replace a lifter replace all of the lifters uh and cam or uh what the case is uh to get this back up and running uh it's actually in uh, really good condition it is that uh denali uh like i said with the v8 so uh, i'm not a big fan of these uh envoys equinox i think is the other one or trailblazer equinox is something else envoy and trailblazer i guess is this body style i'm not a big fan of these uh but uh, if you were to have one this would be the one to have with the v8 and the uh, you know leather interior and all that stuff so uh, it appears to be in uh you know it's got some some wear and tear from 170,000 miles or 168 on it but it's all here in fairly respectable shape if you took a little time and cleaned this thing up uh it would be a, a decent vehicle so I'm sure something's going to happen to get this thing running I'm not sure uh what that's going to be I'm going to talk to the uh person that owns it and see what their decision is and how far they want to go what they want to do uh to fix it um but that's it that's where she sits now uh, in a pile of parts uh, it's been two days of messing with that, trying to get that, uh, lifter to free up and it's not gonna, it's not gonna happen. So, uh, you know, that would have been probably a temporary fix anyways, just if I could get it going, it still could have at any given time collapsed again. Uh, even with, uh, up and watching this trial, 
It's all led to this. Turn Each that down. Side has made Anybody watching this uh, Murdoch trial, the Alex Murdoch murders? It's going on right now. But, uh, if we do get it running and uh, it's something that's video worthy, I'll uh, follow up and do a follow up video on it. But I wanted to uh, at least show this if somebody else is having a misfire in a cylinder and. This is a way to check to see if that's your issue in one of these. Uh, this is just a 5.3 liter that they put in pretty much all kinds of GMs, uh, GMC, uh, Silverado, Sierra trucks, Suburbans, Tahoes, all those uh, 5.3. This is a 2007, uh, which is, I believe, the first year that they started using this displacement on demand system, uh, which I also had in my 2008, I think it was, uh, Avalanche, the blue Avalanche that I just had a few months back. Uh, which I did use HP tuners to tune out so that it never activated the four-cylinder mode, so this didn't happen. Uh, <clears throat> so that's uh, what a lot of people do to prevent this from happening, and then you can get a good 200,000 miles easily out of the motor, if not up to 300. Uh, again, this one's only got the 168 on it. That's, you know, all original. I'm, I'm seeing original hoses in here. I'm seeing a lot of originality. You know, you got the original hose clamps here. I even want to say it's original water pump. Uh, I think this thing's had a uh, decent life and uh, pretty much has been pretty uh, reliable, I would say, because I don't see any other sp uh, uh, parts swiped. Even the even the alternator looks original. You know, uh, it's got the same amount of uh, like corrosion look to it as this bracket that's on the front of the motor. So, I think somebody got uh, a good hundred and sixty nine thousand miles before they had any major problems with this. And now it's at the point where it's probably going to need a good amount of, you know, we haven't even put it up in the air yet. It it's, could use some, uh, I'm sure it needs some, you know, uh, ball joints and, you know, all that stuff. I know the racks are another issue that can happen in these. Uh, the um, sway bar link ends I know are a huge thing that go in these. Axles, uh, <clears throat> you know, shock struts, all that type of stuff. I know a lot of the uh, control. I think the swing arms in the back, I think this has rear swing arms trying to remember maybe not maybe it's the front i'm thinking of but there's some common problems that these things have they're not the the greatest vehicle on the road but again if you were to have one this would be the one you'd want to have and uh it might be worth putting the money into and getting it uh and getting it up and running so all right that's it for this video guys uh, hopefully this helps somebody out thanks for watching have a good one